I warned her to set boundaries with her toxic family or our wedding would be off. When her family pushed her over the edge and she sided with them, repeating their lies, I walked out. Was this my final act of love or just the last straw? I've been dating my fiance for four years and have been engaged for seven months. We are trying to plan out a wedding for roughly fall next year. Her childhood was terrible and abusive, to put it mildly. Her parents were raging narcissists and she was the scapegoat for her two brothers. She was abused and thrown out the moment she turned 18. She was, however, a great student and hard worker. So with some scholarships and a part-time job, she has a great career and is pretty independent. The problem is that she still had contact with her family. None of them have changed. Well, actually, something has changed. They have become more financially dependent on her. They enjoy slowly creeping back into her life and emotionally blackmailing her for support or whatever she can do. They're not pleasant about it either. They're rude, smug, and generally enjoy being a nuisance. And my fiancé can't say no. No matter the horrible things they say or how they outright try to intimidate her openly. I've always known her family history and have always supported her through the issues with them. But in the last year or so, they've become far more brazen and asinine. They come over to our house more often. They make messes all around the place. Her mother acts like she's the fucking stepmother from Cinderella. Her dad drinks all my fucking beer and empties out half the fridge. Her brothers stop by occasionally to act as mouthpieces for their parents. They practically trash the place and leave us to clean the mess. And where is my fiance in all this? Quietly standing in the corner practically shaking. I'm no fool here, there's legitimate trauma. There's her need to feel loved by them and her hoping they will appreciate her. Before one of you noble commenters states the obvious, she's been in therapy for this for years. I've tried to establish boundaries. For nearly two years I've been trying to push these ass clowns away, but this is her house she purchased. And no matter of contributions financial of otherwise, will she let me have a say on who comes into her house? She's been beaten down mentally and emotionally by them for so long. She has told me recently that she wants to earn their approval. How they were right about her. How she needs to be better for them. I've had too many emotional conversations with tears and begging to count, hoping she will take the steps to get better. But she's an adult. I can't force her to do anything. I love her but I can't help but feel so resentful of what she's doing. It's agonizing watching someone you love, someone who you know deserves so much better, openly destroy themselves for people like her family. It's been painful watching her cry herself to sleep one too many nights because of them. I've tried too many times to help her get out of their clutches, but I have to think of the future. What happens when we have kids? What happens when she is postpartum and invites them over? What happens if there is a medical emergency for either of us? What if our finances get tight and they still demand money? This is the in-law family from hell and I won't be able to avoid them. Tomorrow I'm going to tell her how I want to delay the wedding until firm boundaries are established. If she resents me, I walk. I can't do it anymore. I refuse to watch a slow death like this any further. Update, talk to her, and it went about as well as one could possibly expect. Currently getting myself set up in a hotel for a few days and working on possible long-term plans for moving out. Still a lot going on right now, but maybe sometime next week I'll be able to put everything together into one update. Relevant comments. Comment 1. Would the two of you be open to couples therapy? Therapy is too often brought up as the ultimate solution to relationship problems, but in this instance, having a neutral third party who is experienced and qualified in the area of couples therapy could be really helpful. Best of luck, and the only as here are her family op. I've hinted at it before, but she hasn't been very receptive. I'm hoping tomorrow I can try and pursue that and not have to make an ultimatum. Common too, you can't save her if she doesn't want to be saved. Even if she wants to, you'd only be able to help and support. She needs to be the one to enforce the boundaries and hold them, but she doesn't. It's up to you if you want this for life. Have you spoken to her about where you are? That you're on the verge of breaking up with her for this lack of boundaries? No, it's not to manipulate her into choosing you. Although some will say that. It's just a statement of fact. She may be willing to sacrifice everything for her family, but you are not. If this is the life you have to look forward to, you don't want it. You need to put yourself and your needs first. Who knows? It may prompt her to open her eyes and put herself first with her family, but likely not.
Update 1. The night after I made the first post, I had decided that I was going to have a heart-to-heart -heart with my fiancé about her family. However, she came back from work the next day early and I already was off that day, so I initiated the talk a little sooner than I planned. Essentially, I told her how this arrangement was not sustainable. I did not feel comfortable marrying her due to how much involvement in her life her family has and I certainly did not feel comfortable bringing a child into this world with them. I didn't want to tell her cold turkey no contact with them, but strict limitations to start with on then coming over, and what they can do around the house. I also requested couples therapy before marriage. She wasn't happy. She was just staring angrily at me while I spoke then started yelling at me when I finished. She told me I don't understand their dynamic and it worked for her. I told her that they're abusive users who will bleed her dry and I have never seen them show any decency to her. She told me she just had to work harder for them to appreciate her. I basically yelled at her that a parent's child shouldn't have to beg and plead and work for them to be loved. I finally told her that she sets limits with them, or I walk. She was livid, and since I was living in her house, I was kicked out. So the past few days I have been staying in a hotel and have had my stuff taken out and put into storage. And frankly, it's been great. I am going to stay with family for a few weeks around mid-July, and after that I am going to go house searching for myself. I have spent the last couple days relaxing, catching up on movies and video games I haven't had time for, and could go back from work to a quiet room without her family tearing the place apart. Yesterday, however, things came to a head. We have basically been no contact since she booted me out, but I know every Saturday her family loves to spend the afternoon over and she uses me as a shield from their abuse. However, in a very petty move, I simply kept my phone muted all day and played Disco Elysian. I knew she would call back for help with her family, and at this point pure resentment was kicking in for her and I wanted nothing you do with her issues. By the end of the night she had sent me over a dozen texts, and finally two frantic voicemails begging me to come home. I decided to come over to check up on her. Long story short, she was sobbing in the living room, and when I came to talk to her she was practically crushing my back hugging me and sobbing. I gave her time to cool off and asked what happened. Long story short, her parents and brother came by to gift money from her and say horrible shit to her. She wanted to have me come over to help but I was ignoring her, and when she tried to have one of her friends friends help out and everyone basically said fuck that. It all started clicking in for her. She kicked her family out but not before they said some utterly vile shit to her I won't repeat. She kept apologizing to me and told me over and over to come home. I told her plainly that I had started to build up heavy resentment towards her for some time and while I loved her and understand it was trauma and not her being outright abusive, there was major issues that would need to be addressed if we were to move forward. She sells the house and moves. We make roughly the same amount of money and we will buy a house together. I am a grown-ass man and I will not live in a house I have no equal agency over. Her family will never step a foot in it. They will never come over. They will be treated by me in a very threatening manner if they try and come in. She gets a new therapist and we start premarital counseling. She never makes me interact with her family. We will go LC with her family right now but make no mistake we are working towards full NC on her end. I told her I love her, we have been together for a while now and have beautiful memories together and I know she is suffering from abuse. But these are non-negotiable and if she has a problem with any of them then we have to go out separate ways. She told me she's realized for a while now that her family is toxic and unhealthy she wants to make changes. She has accepted but some of these will take a while to see through. For now I am going to stay in the hotel until I head back to stay with my family. She is welcome to come over but I have made it clear her house is not somewhere I want to go. Her and I are both off tomorrow, so we will spend the day here and maybe go out. This is obviously not over yet, but I might not post anything else until mid-August or so. Relevant comments. Comment 1. It's cute you think she won't continue to choose her family over you, but it's going to be even worse once you're legally bound by a home purchase. Comment 2. She isn't going to follow through. She is going to do anything she can to keep you around as her shield, but she isn't going to cut them off. And if you get a house together and God forbid have a child, you're then tied to them and your child is tied to them for the rest of your life. The best thing you can do is step away. Update 2. Despite all intentions of not updating until much later with the hopes of an improved relationship with my fiancé and her establishing boundaries with her toxic family, we are now broken up. 
Essentially, what happened was after last weekend where I left her for the time to deal with them herself. She seemed to finally grasp the situation and was open to changes including boundaries and a possible move. We spent Monday and Tuesday hanging out in my hotel that I was staying in until I went back to my family for a couple weeks. The other night, she was being very vague with texting when she originally was supposed to come over. She came much later than expected and I knew something was up. She basically unloaded on me how I was abusive, controlling, overly demanding, and unsupportive. It took me five fucking seconds to figure out she was repeating verbatim some sort of rehearsed speech from her parents. And to be honest, I was so agitated at this point, despite making a huge gamble on her, I decided to be a prick about it. I asked her if her family told her to say this. She said they suggested it to her, but she came up with it herself. Suguri. I asked her to explain in detail what I did. She said I was living like a parasite off her. I reminded her that I'm paying 50 50 its for her fucking mortgage, 50 50 its for utilities and groceries as well. I have my own car I pay for. A job that makes just about as much as hers, unlike her fucking leech parents who demand payments on the weekly and raid the kitchen on the weekends. I told her to try again with something better. She looked flustered and said I was trying to isolate her. I kinda smirked like a jackass and told her that I have always supported her many friendships that she has destroyed on her own because no one wants to deal with her family or be used as a shield like me. I was practically demanding to know at this point why she is so hell-bent on destroying her life for these people. She just kind of shouted that I don't understand her family and she's just trying to earn their love back and was basically ranting at that point. It's just so staggering to see up close. I have ventured into a few subreddits to get perspectives. And if you have any familiarity with them, you'll see how people who are victims of abuse by their own family can be so utterly broken by it that it'll wreck their brain to where they truly believe they are the problem and they deserve the abuse. Well, that's how she was. She was utterly broken and didn't want help. She didn't want to get better. She just wanted to get worse. It hit me like a truck, honestly, the realization. I really did feel like a fool for trying, even if it was what I was supposed to do in the first place. She was practically berserk at this point, and I was just mentally exhausted and needed her to leave before someone called the police. She finally left, but I had a few concerned neighbors check on me. Some of her friends are aware as they have messaged me checking on the situation. I told them the truth and that I just needed to be alone to think what to do next right now. They have revealed that she has given them similar rants after they expressed concern for her. One had even heard that she may be possibly at risk of losing her job. She is definitely having some sort of mental break. From my understanding, she is now completely isolated. She is actually sprinting into a horrible, lonely life right now. There's nothing I can do for her at this point, and as selfish as it sounds, I'm just glad it's going to be behind me. Relevant comments. Comment 1, move out, cut all contact, move on. You can't make someone help themselves. Comment 2, sorry it went this way, but you can't help someone who doesn't want it. In many ways, she sounds like an addict, and her addiction is to the vile treatment she gets from her family and to the faint hope that they'll love her someday. She has to hit rock bottom, just like any addict, but you shouldn't be around when that happens. Update 3, things have kinda wrapped up, but there were some loose ends. I completely forgot to change my mailing address, which I should have done ASAP, so a couple important things got sent to her house. I had to go pick them up, plus a final couple of items I want for my move that I left there and decided I wanted to actually take. She was being difficult and not responding to messages in regards to them, so I had to go get them from her myself. I brought a mutual friend just in case. Thankfully, she was at least cooperative in letting me get my stuff and it wasn't much of an issue. Everything else was though. She had a lot of nasty things to say. Telling me she was already sleeping around. Telling me how happy she was now that I was gone. Telling me she's finally free of me, how she's going to be so much better off without me. A lot of generic insults and horrible things you would commonly expect from a nasty breakup. And you know what? It was so fucking obvious. It was a rehearsed script from her family and you could easily see how miserable she was. She looked like a mess. Like she hasn't slept in days. The house was a mess. She wasn't even yelling it. She sounded so exhausted and broken when she said it. She didn't even smile when she said anything. Just a face contorted in hate and anger. She was not the woman I knew anymore. That person was gone.
When I was getting ready to leave, she was still going on. I was fed up and told her something along the lines of, Congratulations. Your friends are gone. Your human shields are gone. Your engagement is over. Your support is gone. Anyone who ever treated you like a decent human being is gone. It's just you and your family. I hope you're happy while they bleed you dry. It probably didn't go like that, but something like it. She just stood there. Literally just stood there and looked at me with indifference and walked away as I walked out the door. As we were leaving, the mutual friend Tiffany asked if I was okay. I reassured her I was, and I'm just trying to get myself set up to go home next week. She also confirmed that she hears my ex did lose her job for not showing up for several days and basically ghosting them. They're going to try an intervention next week and asked if I could participate, but I'm not delaying my travel because frankly, I just want a clean break. I know for a fact that if I stay involved in only going to be witnessing the slow descent to either a full break or a suicide, I just can't do that. Despite all this, I'm actually excited for the future and I have realized that I ignored way too many red flags at the beginning. Even with everything that happened, I know I'll be doing good and I'm going to be all right. I expect this to be my final update. I'm still in town until Sunday afternoon so something could happen while I'm still here, but if anything does, it won't be exciting. Comments Comment 1. Not participating in the intervention was the right choice. Maybe it'll help her, but not your problem. She's proud of sleeping around. Comment 2. She's becoming her family. You did the right thing. I come from a family much like hers. I've watched multiple cousins evolve into the next generation of abusive AA ass after once swearing they'd get away. They cared more about their family's approval than they did their mental well-being, and now they're miserable and just like their parents to their own kids. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.